All right, wonderful people. Let's try and complete this grade eight question paper. So we are in 3.2. And let me just show you the diagram that is provided to us. And uh, this would be the diagram. And the angle is 45. Uh, this is A, T, this is A, and this is B. And those are the angles that needs to be found. So we know that sum of the angles of a triangle equals 180. We can start first by finding A. Or we can say sum of the two opposite angles equals the exterior. We can find that one. So the choice is ours. So angle B will be equals. Remember they said uh, reasons need not uh, be given. So angle B is equals to 80 plus 45 degrees which should give us uh, 125 degrees right that would be the angle B and then angle A as you can see with angle B forms a straight line we can say uh, A plus B equals 180 and we can therefore say angle A equals 180 minus 125. Uh, 100 minus 100, it's uh, 080 minus 25. We can just do it in this way. A zero cannot minus, we borrow 1, 10, 7. 10 minus 5 is 5. 7 minus 2 is 5. So the answer is 55 degrees. That would be the value of angle A. Or somebody might say that um, 45 plus 80 plus A equals 180 degrees. So somebody might want to come and just say uh, A plus 80 plus 45 equals 180. Uh, the reason would be some of the angles of a triangle. And then angle A plus uh, 125 equals 180 degrees and that would give you exactly the same answer of 55 degrees so uh it really uh it's up to you how you want to do it so that was 3.2 a let's go and look at number b so in number b what we can do this is what is provided to us 80 degrees and then we have a line, this is C and this is C. And what rule do you think we can use here? We know that vertically opposite angles are equal. Therefore, that is to say uh, C plus C equals 80 degrees. Uh, the reason is um, vertically opposite angles. So 2C equals 80 degrees. You can divide by 2 angle c equals 40 degrees and you would be done and then from there we can continue and look at number c so in number c this is what we have we have uh, a line and this is what we have we have 74 degrees we have d we have e and we have f this line is parallel to that line so we want to find those angles. Let me just do this. So we want to find um, D, E, and F. So the first one I can find, it's really my choice. I can say they are vertically opposite, equal. Or I can say this and this is 180. The choice is mine. So I'm just going to say E equals 74 degrees. They said reason need not be given. So they are equal because they are vertically opposite. And I can also say 74 degrees plus angle D equals 180. That would be straight line. Therefore, D equals 180 minus 74 degrees. Okay, and then that should give me... Um, uh, let me check. Okay, I would have 100. Okay. From 80, let's minus 74, we will get 106 degrees. I think that would be correct. I think that would be correct because from 80, if we minus 70, we are left with 10. 10 minus 4, that is 6. 
I think we are fine. So we have E and D. And 106 plus 74, it's 180 to show that we are correct. And then from there, how do I find angle F? I know that angle F equals 74 because they are corresponding angles. So angle F equals 74. The reason is corresponding angles. And then that makes a lot of sense. Or somebody might say, look at this this is a z shape can you see this z shape this is equals to that they are alternating angles somebody might want to say that but that is also fine there are different ways in which we can approach such a problem and then let's go to number d and in number d uh, the following is presented before us. This is what we have. This side equals that side. This is H and this is I. And this is 50 degrees. This is an isosceles triangle. And if two sides are equal, we know that two angles are equal. So some of the angles are equals to 180. So that is to say, okay, um... H, I know that angle H is equals to angle I, which is equals to 180 minus 50 degrees, because some of the angles must give you 180. And then you would have 180 minus 50, which is um, 130 degrees. But because they are equal, I need to divide this by 2. And then that would give me... Uh, 65 I think 65 degrees I think so let me check whether this is correct uh, 0 carry 1 uh, 13 very good so we are correct that H is equals to I which is equals to 65 degrees and then lastly in number E we have uh, the following so we have this that and this and this is twice g plus 30 degrees and this one is 60 degrees and this is parallel to that and there's a z shape here this is a z shape so they are alternating angles and they are equal so 60 degrees equals twice G plus 30, group the like terms. 60 minus 30 twice G, divide both sides. G, 60 minus 30, it's 30. 30 divide by 2, it's 15 degrees. And we are done with this question paper. I will see you in another grade 8 tutorial. Uh, welcome wonderful people, this is Mr. Ndabizita once again and this time we are dealing with a grade 8 question paper on the subject of mathematics. And uh, in the very first question this is what we are presented with, a 2 and 3 and a quarter minus 0 0.234 the square root of 9, the square root of 25, the third root of negative 27, 5 divided by 0 and 19. And what do they require from us is that from the list of these numbers that are provided, number A, they say we should find a prime number. Now remember in the definition of a prime number, a prime number is a number that is only two factors. Uh, and these two factors has to be two numbers that are different from one another. So one cannot be a prime number because one times one is one. And these are two identical numbers. Therefore, one cannot be identified as a prime number. Two is a prime number. Remember, prime numbers have only two factors, one and the number itself, but they have to be very different. So 2 will be a prime number because the factors of 2 are only 2 times 1 and uh, 2 and 1 are two separate numbers. Therefore 2 is a prime number. 
and we have three and so on and five and and so on only those two numbers which when you multiply them they have only the factors one and the number itself so let's look from the list of the numbers that are provided to us so any whole number also not not any number some uh, whole numbers like two uh, prime numbers and also rational numbers so for example in here if we were to look for a prime number it cannot be uh, a prime number can be a fraction for example 2 2 can be written as 2 divided by 1 so be very careful with that so this one cannot be a prime number why because it's not a whole number first of all secondly it cannot be a prime number why because it has a decimal the square root of 9 is a 3 that's what i know the square root of 9 is a 3 so meaning this can be simplified to 3 and the question is is 3 a prime number yes 3 has the factors 1 and 3 therefore it is a prime number so remember but we need to be very careful here when you introduce a square root you will always get two numbers so the square root of 9 is a positive 3 and the square root of 9 it's also negative 3 but let's just interpret this as just 3 not as two different numbers let's just say the square root of 9 is a 3 and therefore 3 will be a prime number let's just restrict ourselves with that 25 cannot be a prime number because it has more than one uh, more than two factors the third root of negative 27 it's uh, i think it's a three negative three and negative three cannot be a prime number and then five divided by zero uh, any number divided by zero it's uh a complex number and 19 can be a prime number so there are only four marks that are provided here for a b c and d so meaning we should only have one number as an answer for each when i look at the marks there we have a b c d therefore and there's a total of four marks so there should only be one there should only be one that we pick from that entire list so in order for us to be very safe in this we're not going to pick this because it is a square rooted number this is a fraction this is a decimal this uh the third root of negative 27 will give you negative three we're not going to pick that one Mets error so the only true prime number we have from this list where each uh, is provided with uh, a one mark because we have a until d therefore we will take 19 so the prime number there will be 19 number b a square number a square number so for example when you square a number you are in essence uh, doubling that number so i know that 25 can be a square number because a 5 squared it's 25 so i'm going to pick this one see a negative integer now remember integers are whole numbers and this time they are very specific a negative integer they are whole numbers and this time they are looking for a negative one and there it is the third root of the square root of negative 27 will give you negative 3 and negative 3 is in essence a negative integer and d a non-real number a non-real number it's a number that doesn't fall on the real number six system it is a complex number which is five divided by zero and that should give us a total of four marks for question one right now let's go and try to look at question two and in question two uh number a they say that we should um determine the prime factors of 275 and 350 
So they are looking for prime factors of 275 and 350. Now, suppose you have a calculator FX82ZA and I'm going to show you uh, how you can find the prime factors of any number using that scientific calculator. So let me go to my calculator here. I'm using uh, FX double nine one ES ES plus. So what you do, you just type in the number two hundred and seventy five. Then you press equal sign. Then you press shift and then you press effect. And then I want to show you what it will provide to you. For two seventy five. you will get 5 squared times 11. Let's go and look for 350. So let me just do this. Let me just say uh, 350 equals shift and fact. Uh, with a 350, we get 2 times uh, 5 squared times 7 this is exactly what we get and now how many marks are provided here let me just take you back we have a total of four marks so what do you do there because they are not very specific whether you should use uh, the tree diagram or the step ladder diagram so what uh, we will do is the following so I'm going to use a ladder diagram. You will say 350. And then I want you to check something here. You have 2 times 5 squared times 7. So it tells you that the first time divide 350 by 2. 350 divided by 2. You see now. Um, what is it that we can get? Let me just do this. So, if we say 350 divided by 2, that would give us 175. So, we divide it by 2. Now, you need to divide by the first 5. How many of them do you have? 2 of them. You need to divide first by 5. So, 175 divided by 5. Let's see what we will get. Um, 175 divided by 5 that should give us 35 we divided by the first 5 we need to divide by the second 5 so 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 that would give you 7 now you need to divide by 7 and 7 divided by 7 would give you 1 so 350 if you are writing this as uh, prime factors, that would be 2 times 5 times 5 times 7 times 1, which can be rewritten as 2 times when I multiply numbers of the same basis, I add the exponent. And we are done. I think it is very important that they want to see this. This step is very, very important because they know you can use a programmable calculator and it can take you straight there. But if you omit at all this, they might uh, take some marks for you. So please try to draw up a table before you can come to this side. Okay, that was for 350. Let's look for 275. Right, we have uh, already saw. Uh, for 275, we had, remember, 5 squared times 11. So we're going to divide by 5 first time, divide by 5 second time, and then divide by 11 the last time. So I'm going to divide here by 5. Now, what is 275 divided by 5? Now, let me just do this. Um, 275 divided by 5 that gives us 55 and I'm going to divide by 5 for the second time 55 divided by 5 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. That should give us 11. And 11 divided by 11, remember, would give you 1. So 275, that is to say 275 is equals to 5 times 5 times 11 times 1 which can be rewritten as a 5 squared times 11 times 1. And you have written both 275 and 350 as uh, prime factors. And then we are done for number A. Now we go to number B. Right, let me just see what they want in number B. Now determine the highest common factor of 275 and 350. So let's see if we can do that. Now we want the highest common factor of those two numbers. Right, 275 and 350. Now let me show you how we are going to do this. Now remember for 275, we found... 5 squared times 11 times 1 and for 350 uh, we found 2 times 5 squared times 7 times 1 remember this is what we found and then what we are going to do is the following uh, in order to find the highest common factor it is something that is common the highest common factor there has to be a factor something that is common in here and also in there very important so i have a five how many of them two of them in here five how many of them two of them in here so i'm going to take the highest which is five to the exponent of two so you just say 5 squared times. Then you check. Is there any other thing that is common on both? No. I cannot take 2. It is not common. I cannot take 7. It is not common. I cannot take 11. It is not common. But I can take 1 because it is common. And what is 5 squared times 1? That is 25. So that is to say 25 can divide into 275 and 350 without leaving any remainder. That is why we are saying it is the highest common factor. And they were providing two marks for that. And then that we are fine with question two, I will see you in question three. Now, in question three, we have the following. They say calculate the following without the use of a calculator showing workings out where necessary. So in number A, we have negative 9 minus into minus 5. Now here, the Botmas rule plays a significant role because whenever we remove the brackets, multiplication has to be involved. So I have minus 9. Multiply, remember sorry um minus nine and then from there negative times negative is a positive and that should give you a five this is the first thing that they want to see they want to see that you have multiplied negative by negative in order to get a positive so don't just plug this on a calculator yet before you can manipulate that it is very true that you can plug this on your calculator and it will provide you with the final answer but it will not show you the steps that are necessary for that so minus 9 plus 5 will give you minus 4 and this is only the answer that the calculator will provide for you because all the manipulations are done uh, behind the scenes as uh, the software engineers we know how this is done so let's look at number B. Uh, we have negative 4 plus into negative 8 divided by 2 into negative 3. And we need to um, 
show our workings without using a calculator so because there's no number that multiplies negative 4 I might as well just write it outside of the brackets positive times negative will give you a negative 2 times negative 3 will give you negative 6 you can insert this on a calculator no problem you will encounter you can enter this on a calculator no problem you will encounter minus 4 minus 8 that should give us minus 12 divided by minus 6 negative divided by negative is a positive 6 divided by 2 or how many 6 can I pull out of 12 2 of them that should be a final answer for you and they give you 3 marks for that 3 marks and then let's go to number C the square root of 25 minus the third root of minus 8 plus into minus 2 squared right I know that the square root of 25 is 5 please do not say plus or minus 5 because remember in the previous tutorials we said when you introduce the square root you will always get two numbers but in this case please whenever you are dealing with this type of algebra uh, just say the square root of 25 on your calculator and then it will provide you with 5 minus now here there's a trick now here what they want is for you to remove this using the laws of uh, the exponent so I'm going to show you this now negative 8 we're going to have a bracket negative 8 in exponential form can be written as negative 2 to the exponent of 3 and then when you remove the square root you will say 1 over 3 then I hope you understand the basics because I'm now dealing with a previous question paper I don't have time for showing you the basics but I hope you understand negative 8 can be written as negative 2 to the exponent of 3 and then you want to remove the third root therefore you will say 1 over whatever number you have there. addition sign negative 2 squared any number inside of the brackets that is negative which has been squared will always bring out a positive you can just insert this on a calculator and the correct answer will be uh, shown on the screen for you so we have 5 minus now in here we need to multiply 3 as a numerator 3 as a denominator they will go once into each other you are left with 2 to the exponent of 1 plus your 4 and then you will say 5 minus 2 that is 3 3 plus 4 that should give you 7 and you are done and they will give you that total of four marks because they are looking as to whether you have understood uh, the fundamental principle but let's see let's be very 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 careful here look at something here please look at something here was there multiplication here I want you to look at something here yes because this if it is inside of the brackets once you say 3 into 3 goes once you are left with negative 2 to the exponent of 1 but now look what I have done I did not put in that negative do you see the mistake I didn't put in that negative there and that will make us very serious problems and then negative times negative should give us a positive so meaning let's erase this one meaning we have 5 plus 2 plus 4 that should give us 7 7 plus 4 should give us 11 let's just go and verify this let's just go and verify this so we have the square root of 25 um, minus the third root of negative 8 plus negative 2 squared and the answer is 11 
very good so uh it is very very important that we see such mistakes allow ourselves to do these mistakes so that at the end of the day we can learn from our mistakes something worthy of noting highly and highly worthy of noting so unfortunately that was the end of question three we need to go to question four right uh, the question paper comes from saint john dsg i think this is a school from uh Houting or something i'm not very sure so let's go to question four simplify the following we have a c squared plus a c squared plus a c squared now whenever there's addition involved and uh, the letters are the same remember there's a one there there's a one there then there's also a one there so you just say 1 plus 1 plus 1, it's a 3. Then you leave your C squared. So C squared plus C squared plus C squared is a 3 C squared. That's how you find your answer. And number B, we have a 3A minus 2A minus 5A. Right, so 3a minus 2a minus 5a. So 3a minus 2a, it's 1a. 1a minus 5a is minus 4a. That should be the answer for you then. And then number C, you have 3p multiplied by p. So you will write your 3 when you multiply numbers of the same basis, you add the exponent. So you will write one base, which is P. 1 plus 1 will give you 2. And you will be done. Very good. And then let's continue in our work. So let's go to number D. This is just to test whether you understand uh, the arithmetic of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. This is all what they are trying to check. So we have 6b divided by 3b. Now, what we will normally say is that b into b will go once. Why? Because the other one is a numerator and a denominator. And then you would say 6 divided by 3 will give you 2. Or how many 3s can I pull out of 6? 2 of them. And you will be done. Right, let's go to number E. 3 times A plus 4 times A times B minus 2 times A. So this is what we have. 3 times A, 3A. Just as you have uh, X times Z, it's XZ. Uh, 12 times P, it's 12P and so on. So I have addition sign. 4 times a it's 4a times b it's b 4 times a it's 4a times b it's 4ab so you can just say 4 times a times b it's 4ab minus 2 times a it's 2a and then you can group the like terms here this is similar to that in a way that they both have a's so you can say 3a minus 2a it's just 1a and you have 4ab so you cannot add these two why because there's no b here you can do that so your answer becomes a plus 4ab and that is uh, totally fine with us and then you can go to number f and you can have 3x minus y minus 2, 2x minus y minus 3x. So we're going to remove the brackets by multiplication. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative y is negative 3y. Multiply. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. We have already talked about this. Negative 2 times negative y is positive 2y. 
minus 3x and then we can group the like terms together this as x x and x so 3 minus 4 is minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 x now I go to y's now minus 3y plus 2y it's minus 1y and you are done you cannot add those two because they are not the same and then that works just fine and then number g we have 14 d squared minus 7 d divided by 7 d now i want to point your attention to something here they want to test whether you understand the concept of factorization so what we can do here there's something common on the numerator which i can pull out first of all 7 goes into 14 without leaving any remainder therefore i'm going to take out 7 i have two d's i have one d therefore i'm going to take the lowest very good and then because there's nothing common anymore that i can take out therefore you make a bracket and then you say what number when i multiply by 7 will i get 14 that's 2 you took one d in here there it is how many d's are left just one subtraction sign you took 7 from this there it is you also took d there it is because there's nothing left you will always say there's a one that is left divided by 7 d you have 7 d as a numerator and as a denominator and there's multiplication therefore this into this will go once and your answer is 2d minus 1 something worthy of noting and they were giving you three marks for that because there was uh, some uh, factorization to be done so let's go to number h x squared multiplied by 2x3 multiplied by 5x4 so what we will do is to say there's a 1 there 1 times 2 times 5 is 10 then we will say x squared times x3 times x4 you write one base because you are multiplying you are adding the exponents 2 plus a 3 it's 5 5 plus 4 it's 9 and this becomes your final answer and they were just giving you two marks for that just to check if you understand let's go to number i 2a3 multiplied by 3ab squared minus 3a squared b squared we just need to simplify this right what we are going to do let's try to simplify whatever that is inside of the brackets before we can exit so 2 times 3 it's 6 a3 remember there's a 1 here for the exponent of a a3 times a remember that would be a4 because when you multiply you add and therefore you are left with your b squared so we can put the brackets back no problem the square there tells us to repeat this two times very good and then from here what we can do the choice is yours i don't want to lie you can say okay um negative times negative is a positive okay let me just do it in this way 6a4b squared right and then let's fix this one negative 3 times negative 3 it's 9 a squared times a squared it's a4 remember when we multiply we add b times b is b squared then from there you can say 6 times 9 times a4 times a4 is a8 b squared times b squared is b4 and then that would be your final answer you can just go to your calculator and find out what the value is for this one 
I hope you have understood that part. And then if you have, let's continue. For the very last one, which is number J, we have 5P3, um, P4, Q3 squared, uh, 10P, Q3. So what we are going to do, remember we, we're going to leave this one, 5P3, we're going to repeat this two times. But there's a simpler way of doing this. We don't have to repeat this two times. What we can do, you can just write your P and you just say 4 times 2, that's 8. Write your Q, 3 times 2 is 6. And you are done. And you can divide by 10P, Q3. And then from there, there's something else that you can do. From here, you have a 5. You can bring it down. Look what is happening. P3 multiplied by P8. That should give you P11. And then you have your Q6 divided by 10 P Q3. We can take this further. 5 divided by 10 is 1 half. You have P11 of them, you cancel 1, you will be left with 10 of them on the numerator. You have Q6 of them, you cancel 3 on the denominator, on the numerator you will be left with 3 of them. So this can be rewritten as P10 Q3 divided by 2. Because 1 times P10 times Q3 is this divided by 2 and you will be done for question uh, what question is this question 4 and then I will see you in question 5 okay wonderful people uh, let's move to question 5 so uh, in question 5 they say consider the expression below and then answer the questions that follows so we are given the expression Remember an expression. It's a mathematical description that has no equal sign 9 plus 3 x squared Minus 4 x 3 minus 4 x. So this is a mathematical expression In question 5 number a just one mark is provided and they say the following um, they want us to rewrite the ex expression in descending order. So meaning from biggest to smallest. That would be the descending uh, powers of X. So uh, we will start first with this since it is the highest exponent. Remember to take in uh, the sign. So that would be negative 4X3 plus 3X squared minus 4X plus 9 so descending powers of x they should have been more specific but that is fine um how many terms are there in the expression we have one two three four terms number c what is the coefficient of x squared the coefficient it's a number that is in front of your x squared which is positive three And then number D, determine the value of the expression if x is equals to minus 1. So we will have 9 plus 3 into minus 1 uh, squared minus 4 into minus 1, 3 minus 4 into minus 1. So I'm substituting on the original one. You can do it in this one, no difference it shall make. So I have 9 plus 3 minus 1 squared minus 4 into minus 1, 3 minus 4 into minus 1. So I will get 9 plus negative 1 squared is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, minus 4 times negative 1 to the exponent of 3 will give you uh, negative 1, negative times negative is a positive. 
and then from here you will have your 9 plus uh, 3 minus 4 times minus 1 it's positive 4 plus 4 so look what is happening I have my 9 there it is plus 3 from this there it is negative 4 times negative 1 it is a 4 negative times negative it's positive and then from here they will say 9 plus 3 it's uh, 12 12 plus 4 16 16 plus 4 it's 20 so 20 becomes the answer for this uh, expression so that was a total of six marks for question five all right let's move on to um question six so in question six we have the following they say in question six a right algebraic expression for the following so uh, they want the sum of a and b we need to write an algebraic expression for that or an algebraic expression for this the sum of a and b now sum is addition so what are you adding you are adding a and b so that would be a plus b that would be the expression very good number b the product of a and b product is multiplication so what are you multiplying a and b this is the product of a and b c they say three times the difference between p and q three times the difference between p and q three times the difference is subtraction the difference of what p and q so this is the difference of p and q but three times that difference please be very very careful then you have to say three open bracket p minus q three times the difference of p minus q three times the difference of p and q very important and then the very last one the sum of two numbers where the second number is double the first number so the sum of two numbers so let's say those numbers are x and y they are sum that would be x plus y the sum of two numbers we have these two numbers which we don't know which is x and y where the second number is double the first so let's double the second number and let's rewrite this in a nicer way x plus 2y and you are done right that was just question 6 it was worth 7 marks let's go to question 7 now um in question 7 if a equals 3 b equals minus 2 and c equals 0 find the value of a b all squared so if a is equals to 3 and b it's equals to minus 2 and c is equals to 0 they want us in number a to find a b squared so a is a 3 b is minus 2 that is squared 3 times negative 2 it's negative 6 squared which will give you 36 if you plug this on your calculator you will get that now number b they want a b divided by c so a b divided by c a is a 3 b it's minus 2 divided by c which is a zero three times negative two negative six divided by zero which is complex number very very complex or you can say mess error or you can say it is undefined right uh number c they say uh a minus two b 
so this is what they want so a it's 3 minus 2 b it's minus 2 so you have your 3 there negative times negative it's positive 2 times 2 it's 4 which will give you a 7 and you are pretty much done right that was question 7 we need to move to question 8 so in question 8 what is it that they want uh, let me just scroll up okay solve for x uh, in the following so number a they say x minus 1 it's equals to 5 now remember when we solve for x x has to be on its own on the side so let's write it equal sign we have 5 <clears throat> let's take this negative 1 to the other side of the equal sign it is negative when it goes to that side it becomes positive and you get your answer as a 6 then very good and to check whether you are correct 6 where you see x go and write 6 6 minus 1 is equal to 5 so you are correct in what you have said let's go to number b x divided by 2 equals negative 5 we need to get rid of the denominator whenever we are solving for x so how do we get rid of the denominator we multiply both sides by the denominator so that is to say x divided by 2 you will multiply this by 2 negative 5 you will multiply that by 2 so this into this goes once because denominator and numerator they are the same you will be left with x negative 5 times 2 it's negative 10 and you will be done let's go to number c 4x minus 21 equals 5 minus 9x so from here we need to group the like terms x's with x's numbers with numbers so this is 4x this one it's negative when it goes to the other side it becomes positive equal sign you have your 5 at this side take this negative to that side it becomes positive 4x plus 9x should give you 13x 5 plus 21 should give you 26 we can divide by 13 this into this goes once i think how many 13s can i pull out of 26 two of them and you are done that was number c let's go to number d so 4x plus 3 equals 5 6x minus 2 plus 3 so we can have uh, 4x plus 12 we can have uh, 5 10 15 20 25 30 we can have 30x minus 10 please be very careful of the multiplication in there plus 3 uh, 4x plus 12 I have my 30x group the like terms uh, minus 10 plus 3 it's minus 7 okay that is fine because this one is bigger let's take the smaller one to the other side so this side I'll be left with 12 take this to the other side you have 30x take this to the side and this is what you get 12 plus 7 should give us uh, 19 30 minus 4 should give us 26x 26 26 this into this goes once and this becomes your number and if you can simplify this you can just go ahead and do it that is also fine and then let's go to number E. 
2x squared equals 32. Uh, we want to get rid of the coefficient of x squared. We do that by dividing both sides by that number. This into this goes once. You are left with your x squared. Uh, 36 divided by 2 should give you 16. You want to get rid of the exponent of 2 there just to square both sides. The square root on 2 will cancel. You will be left with x. Or you can say the square root on 2 goes once into each other. The square root of 16 is 4. And you are done. That was question 8. Let's see what we have in question 9. So in question 9, they say... Write an expression for the distance from A to B in terms of X and simplify. So let me show you what they have here. They have something like this, something like this, something like that. So this is 3X plus 20, 10 minus 2X, 4X plus... 18 and 5 into 7 minus x so this is a this is b c d and e and i want you to be very very careful here <laughs> write an expression for the distance from a to b in terms of x and simplify so the distance from a going to b and I know that distance is a measure of the length with respect to the time. So I'm just going to add this with this. Because to get to B from A, I need to move in this sequence. So I'm going to say, so meaning I'm adding all these. 3x plus 20 plus 4x plus 18. Okay, sorry, plus 10 minus 2x plus 5 into 7 minus x that would be the distance so uh, this plus this plus this plus that you just add in all those things and then what i can do is just to say okay 3x plus 4x is 7x 7x minus 2x is 5x so let me just do this to show that i'm done with those uh, 20 plus 18 it's 38 and then 38 plus 10 it's uh, 48 so I have 48 are we done yes we are done plus I have my 5 7 minus X so from here I can say 5x plus 48 plus 5 times 7, um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And 5 times negative x is minus 5x. Now look what transpires in here. This is a positive, this is a negative, and 48 plus 35. 8 plus 5 it's uh, 13 4 plus 3 it's 7 7 plus 1 it's 8 so you will get 83 as uh, the answer for that and three marks are provided if everything was done correctly uh, additions and everything this is exactly what we should get should there be any problem any mistake of adding the numbers there it's your duty to fix it don't argue about that. Alright, in question 10, they say if x is the largest of three consecutive natural numbers, what are the other two numbers in terms of x? Now, uh, in terms of x, this is very important. If x is the largest of three consecutive natural numbers, so they are consecutive in the fact that they 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 follow one another in a sequence. 
of increasing numbers so natural numbers that would be one going to infinity so we can have x plus one uh, okay uh, if x is the largest of three consecutive natural numbers what are the other two numbers in terms of x so i'm going to say x plus one plus x um, will i be correct to say x plus two and x plus three now let's check if x is the largest of three consecutive natural numbers what are the other two numbers in terms of x okay so if x is the largest of three consecutive natural numbers what are the other two numbers in terms of x that would be x plus one and x plus two because in terms of natural numbers and these numbers are consecutive i can say x plus one because one it's a natural number and this is written in terms of x and again x plus two it's a natural number two written in terms of x so if x was the largest so meaning we had x and x plus two and x plus three so if x is the largest of those three consecutive uh x is the largest of three consecutive natural numbers what are the other two the other two may be x plus one or x plus two and if this is not correct sit down and think about that just try and sit down right and then i think we have to move to section b which is worth uh, 45 marks and they say the following fill in the missing word in each of the following so in number a they say 250 degrees is called uh what what angle they want to know uh what is the name of a 250 degree angle and i'm going to draw your attention to the cartesian plane 0 90 180 270 and 360 degrees these are acute angles because they are all angles that are less than 90 they are greater than zero but less than 90 this is acute this is uh, obtuse if i remember well this is a reflex and this is revolution right so a 250 degree angle is between 180 and 270 and it is called a reflex very good number b the complement of 40 is complementary angles add up to 90 so the complement of 40 what is it that we need to add to 40 in order to get 90 that is 50 so the complement of 40 is 50 degrees because complementary angles add up to 90 the supplementary of 80 is supplementary angles form the straight line they add up to 180 so the supplement of 80 degrees is 100 why because 100 plus 80 would give you 180 degrees and then number d uh, the size of an angle of an equilateral triangle is now an equilateral triangle is a triangle was uh, angles all angles are equal to so 60 degrees so remember an e uh, an equilateral triangle has a three sides that are equal if three sides are equal therefore all those angles are equal something worthy of noting and then let's go to number e a triangle with three sides of equal lengths okay the size of an equilateral angle okay that is uh, 60 a triangle with three sides of equal length is called an equilateral so do you see what they are doing they are playing with us here equilateral triangle okay that is fine let's go to number f if an obtuse angle is halved what type of an angle is formed so let's look at an obtuse angle suppose we are having an obtuse angle like um let's say let's take the closest one let's take uh, 150 and let's half this 150 
and let's allow it to give us um okay let's say 75 75 degrees so what is that 75 degrees it will always give you an acute so that will be an acute so if an obtuse angle is a half to what type of an angle is formed it forms an acute an acute angle okay let's go to number G and they say uh, the angle between the two hands of a clock at 1220 is okay let me just draw up a line they say the angle between the two hands of a clock at 12 hour 20 is now let's try to draw this clock and we know that the clock will be 12 here okay it will be six there it will be three there it will be nine there suppose this is the clock that we have and the time uh, it's uh, 12 20 okay uh, let me just do this let me just do this so let's say um, okay this is 12 uh, this is uh, 15 so let's say how do we do this the angle between two hands of a clock at 12 hour 20 is what now let's look at this 12 hour 15 20 might be somewhere here and what is that angle then what is that angle that's a revolution angle let's look check uh, in here 12 15 12 20 it's in here and it's a revolution angle so that would be revolution angle and then the very last one number h 90 degree is also known as a what it is also known as a right angle right angled so a 90 degree angle is also known as a right angled and we are done with um question one of section b we go to question two so in question two we have the following they say classify each triangle according to their size so the first one is provided to us here and this is what is that and we know that if two sides are equal therefore two angles are equal and we need to classify this triangle which triangle has equal sides of equal angle that's an isosceles triangle so this is an isosceles uh, triangle now B they have this one two three so that is to say all three sides are not equal therefore all three angles are not equal and what triangle is that uh is it not scalene uh i'm not very sure guys it's been a very long time not revisiting this grade eight syllabus i think this is a scalene but if it is not go and find out what it is right so i'm not going to stress myself with that so let's go to question 2.1 all right wonderful people let's try and complete this grade 8 question paper so we are in 3.2 and let me just show you the diagram that is provided to us uh, this would be the diagram and the angle is 45 uh, this is 80 this is a and this is B and those are the angles that needs to be found so we know that some of the angles of a triangle equals 180 we can start first by finding a 
or we can say sum of the two opposite angles equals the exterior we can find that one so the choice is ours so angle b will be equals remember they said uh reasons need not uh be given so angle b it's equals to 80 plus 45 degrees which should give us uh, 125 degrees right that would be the angle b and then angle a as you can see with angle b forms a straight line we can say uh, a plus b equals 180 and we can therefore say angle a equals 180 minus 125 uh, 100 minus 100 it's uh, 0 80 minus 25 we can just do it in this way a 0 cannot minus we borrow 1 10 7 10 minus 5 is 5 7 minus 2 is 5 so the answer is 55 degrees that would be the value of angle a or somebody might say that um, 45 plus 80 plus A equals 180 degrees. So somebody might want to come and just say uh, A plus 80 plus 45 equals 180. Uh, the reason would be some of the angles of a triangle. And then angle A plus uh, 125 equals 180 degrees. And that would give you exactly the same answer of 55 degrees. So uh, it really, uh, it's up to you how you want to do it. So that was 3.2a. Let's go and look at number b. So in number b, what we can do, this is what is provided to us, 80 degrees. And then we have a line, this is c and this is c. And what rule do you think we can use here we know that vertically opposite angles are equal therefore that is to say uh, c plus c equals 80 degrees uh, the reason is um, vertically opposite angles so 2c equals 80 degrees you can divide by 2 angle c equals 40 degrees and you would be done and then from there we can continue and look at number c so in number c this is what we have we have uh, a line and this is what we have we have 74 degrees we have d we have e and we have f this line is parallel to that line so we want to find those angles let me just do this so we want to find um d e and f so the first one i can find it's really my choice i can say they are vertically opposite equal or i can say this and this is 180 the choice is mine so i'm just going to say e equals 74 degrees they said reason need not be given so they are equal because they are vertically opposite and I can also say 74 degrees plus angle D equals 180. That would be straight line. Therefore, D equals 180 minus 74 degrees. Okay, and then that should give me... Um, uh, let me check. Okay, I would have 100. Okay from 80 let's minus 74 we will get 106 degrees i think that would be correct i think that would be correct because from 80 if we minus 70 we are left with 10 10 minus 4 that is 6 i think we are fine so we have e and d and 106 plus 74 it's 180 to show that we are correct and then from there how do i find angle f i know that angle f equals 74 because they are corresponding angles so angle f equals 74 the reason is corresponding angles and then that makes a lot of sense or somebody might say look at this 
this is a Z shape. Can you see this? Z shape. This is equals to that. They are alternating angles. Somebody might want to say that. But that is also fine. There are different ways in which we can approach such a problem. And then let's go to number D. And in number D, uh, the following is presented before us. This is what we have. This side equals that side. This is H and this is I. And this is 50 degrees. This is an isosceles triangle. And if two sides are equal, we know that two angles are equal. So some of the angles are equals to 180. So that is to say, okay, um, H, I know that angle H is equals to angle I, which is equals to 180 minus 50 degrees, because some of the angles must give you 180. And then you would have 180 minus 50, which is um, 130 degrees. But because they are equal, I need to divide this by 2. And then that would give me uh, 65, I think. 65 degrees. I think so. Let me check whether this is correct. Uh, 0, carry 1. Uh, 13 very good so we are correct that h is equals to i which is equals to 65 degrees and then lastly in number e we have uh, the following so we have this that and this and this is twice g plus 30 degrees and this one is 60 degrees and this is parallel to that and there's a z shape here this is a z shape so they are alternating angles and they are equal so 60 degrees equals twice g plus 30 group the like terms 60 minus 30 twice g divide both sides g 60 minus 30 it's 30 30 divide by 2 it's 15 degrees and we are done with this question paper i will see you in another grade 8 tutorial